Well, I quickly nipped onto the Toyota stand because over here we have a concept car race car. Here it is, the GR Supra racing concept. This, they're telling us, is the uh, next, well, later this year, we should see official Supra uh, re-entering production. They're a little sports car. Uh, well, it's quite a big sports car, really, going racing. Uh, it, uh, it's... <laughs> There is elements, isn't Algo. there, of um, previous version of um, Super that that raised kick tail with the uh, spoiler on top. How close this is to the production car, I have no idea, but I want to celebrate it because Super was a real uh, mainstay sports car in its period. It's, it's been gone for decades now, and just seeing it, this name return, fills me with excitement. I just wish it was a bit better looking, but let's see what the real concept car, sorry, customer car looks like. Lexus continue with their outlandish design. Um, they like it, which is a good job. I can't say I'm a fan, it's, but it is. I like the way they've actually gone overboard with the style and there's no mistake in Lexus, it doesn't blend in anymore. Um, there is a very distinctive design to Lexus these days. Renault getting their act again, uh, together again. There's the Renault Megane, and RS versions of that. Well, it's great to see them getting a bit of mojo back, really. And with their electric cars, the Zoe, etc. And with their Alpine, Alpine, should I say, uh, brand, sub-brand, just, just around the corner here. There's two versions uh, being launched here. Uh, with just a more dynamic, the uh, Pure and the Legend. And a little race car as well. And I think it's, yeah, it's well known now that yeah, Gordon Murray has ordered one of these because he just loves the idea of this mid-engine, easy to use um, little sports car. I just love the fact that Alpine is back in business and it's a name that we can celebrate again. And I look forward to having a drive in one. All the first drives were very, very positive. We just hope there's enough enthusiasts who really want an Alpine or to slap down £50,000 and ignore whatever offering there is from companies like Porsche. Terrific. I like Dakar bikes, so I have to quickly look at the Honda. The, this is the 450 version of the Honda uh, Dakar bike. This is their Rally, CRF Rally. Quite fancy one of their sheds. But I'm very pleased when I get back home, I'm going to pick up my new Africa Twin, which is that one, the Sport Adventure Sports. Well, then mine's going to have proper knobbly tyres on it, and I'll be off. Well, I've got some big trips planned with it, and I can't wait till that arrives. I'm a little school kid, and <laughs> it's just great to see it at the motor show as well. It's the race GT3 version of the NSX, all carbon bodied on it. There's the production version. But is a really surprising car. Hats off them for delivering. And also the big surprise is just how much, what a performance punch it's got. Way more than the figures might suggest. But what I really wanted to come and show you on the Honda stand, are these two delightful concept cars. They were shown in uh, Japan, uh, Tokyo show, but here they are in the in Geneva show. What a brilliant little design it is. Sim simple, pure Honda. I just hope we see these reach fruition and actually come out. This one is nuts, this little city car. Look at that for a dash layout. Eat your heart out, Elon Musk. That's even bigger than the Tesla screen inside. And then a sort of, like a, oh, I don't know, like a Fiat Panda sort of seating in the back, but the early Fiat Panda version. A lovely little um, city urban EV concept, so pure electric car. Great little details on it. You see the round, the detail around the screen, and it ends in that sort of plug. I think they look thoroughly modern. It's so Honda. Um, we, all, I think, we all secretly love the Honda brand. We just want to produce in edgy cars like this again. Nissan is a fascinating mix of a company, isn't it? There you are, the Nissan GTR there, and then the Formula E up in the background, and the uh, IMAX Cura. This is a, another concept car, electric uh, concept car you imagine to see here. What a what a balmy mix of cars you get from Nick, Nissan these days, and a 370Z. I thought it was out of production, but there it is. The strange black void when you walk onto the Mazda stand. It's sort of blackness, and you, it's hard to pick out the details. But I have to stop by this. This is a, uh, their concept, their big saloon car. It just goes to show there's someone at uh, Mazda who knows how to design a very good-looking car. 
really nice looking car. They're doing some very clever stuff with tech. They've created an engine, almost compression ignition petrol engine, so they're using a the diesel principle. And they predict if it um, was to take off, then the uptake of electric car is going to be delay it by about 10 years because the IC engine has a, a further life to give and hybrid versions of it would be more efficient going to pure electric. Watch this space, but what a great looking concept car that is from Mazda. It's a bit of a sea of nothingness at Ford, but then they spark up the stand by bringing a Mustang. Uh, oh, on the bullet Mustang, there it is in green over there. And if I wander over here, hope I'm not making you too dizzy, is the production version of the bullet Mustang, which is coming to the UK, I'm told. There it is. How about that then? Always, we, had, we ran one at Evo and it was always a bigger car than you expected, with not a huge amount of space inside, but it brought a smile to the face and that's all that you want from a car like this and it was great value. Polestar is uh, Volvo's new performance brand. Uh, we're going to see, it's Polestar 1, it's the first one they've done. We're going to see more from them in the, in the future, but it's, yeah, they're really going places, Volvo. I think they've got the design bang on. It, it's true to brand, and Geely obviously managing this brand extremely well. It reminds me of what Ratan Tata did with Jaguar and Andre, where they didn't impose a sort of, you know, a Chinese uh, look on uh, Volvo. They nurtured it, they recognised it for a, the Swedish brand that it was, and it absolutely enhanced it. It almost sometimes takes a, a country outside the uh, place of manufacture to realise what you've got. And, uh, yeah, really uh, good to see Volvo going places. And, I feel like I'm walking across a sort of IKEA storeroom and where I buy my Volvos at the moment with this board. Let's go and have a look at something a bit more interesting over here. That's the Stratos. Well, here we are on the Stratos stand and this is their remake of the car. We actually tested it in Evo many years ago. It's based on a Ferrari 430 and they have announced uh, intention to finally put it in production. They've got permission to do 25 cars if you fancy one, then you have to um, give them a donor car plus 550,000 euros. And in return, you will get one of these cars, one of 25 being built. There's a taken a few orders already. The first car will be with its customer um, this summer, so about June time. Looks absolutely spectacular inside. I'm gonna quickly open the door while I can before I get told off. See the carbon bodywork? all the way carbon and then inside I love the way they've retained that you carry a helmet in the door like the old one a bit more space inside just a great thing and just with yeah Ferrari F430 power quite special beautifully done with the carbon fibre uh, finish you can just see stratus under it so there you have it Unfortunately, left this uh, original Stratus beside it, and uh, it just shows how fantastic this design on Petite and those crazy doors. Same designer as the Countach, um, which um, you can sort of see all over it. Well, what a, I'd love to have penned both a Countach and a, a Stratos. But there we go. A new car, new remake car here, 550,000 euros, plus taxes, plus donor car, and 25 to be built and 50th anniversary um, the Morgan plus eight there we are little aero screens that just still keeps going in the aero uh, GT here Morgan always take a big stand in Geneva always surprised how many uh, cars they they sell from here and of course the electric um, three-wheeler which we're yet to see in production I'm surprised it's taking this long I thought we'd see it by now but not quite yet when you find yourself on a very crowded BMW stand. So I ate Roadster first. The, the silly rear seats have now gone and they're replaced with a folding roof. A Z4 Roadster concept. That's not a bad looking car, is it either? Thoroughly modern. One of how close to production version that is, but that's basically Z4 and the Super I believe the um, shared mechanicals. I like that. And then I've always liked a BMW Roadster.
Here's another car, just wanted to show you, this is the M8 Grand Coupe concept. Now, BMW announced recently they're going to do this uh, M, uh, an 8 series, which is going to be a coupe roadster version. They're going to go racing back to Le Mans with it as well. It's like a DB11 competitor at one end. And then at the other end is this, this four door monster power car. They're not talking about uh, powertrain on this car at the moment, but it's an aggressive new look for BMW. I think it really plays to the aces of BMW design and I think it's a great effort and I can't wait to see this model hit production. I especially like it with those yellow lights, the French oil, French lights, it just sets it off a treat. Over at Mercedes, AMG GTR version we saw last year, they have their uh, F1 car. What I really want to see is the Project One. I have a suspicion is not here. It's the new G-Wagon and the G63. Quick look at that. I am told this car is transformed dynamically. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't been in it, but the other one was was noticeable by its awful dynamics. Uh, everything, loved everything about it, the noise, etc. And it was a bit of a giggle, uh, but it really had awful dynamics. It was it was wobbly, had no um, torsional stiffness whatsoever. This thing completely different, even though it looks very similar on the outside. Here's the big news of this year's show is the um, AMG DG63 S format. This is basically a Panamera uh, rival that they've come out with. So four seater, four wheel drive, so the gearbox sits on the back of the engine rather than trans, the, uh, not actually in a transaxle uh, like on the GT3. Um, yeah, good, good looking rival. I don't think it, it's breaking any records. Um, looks like a CLS. Uh, just doesn't look as though it's majorly new, but um, they're pretty excited about it. What I can't get over is I can't see their new supercar, the Project One. I cannot believe they'd come to the Geneva show, bring an F1 car, world champions, there we all are, celebrate all that. Where's the Project One? I find that amazing. I was invited upstairs to AMG at the top. Can I say, have you got the Project One there? Uh, no, we haven't brought it to Geneva at all. What? How can you not bring your new supercar to Geneva? Madness. Anyway, let's see what else we've got in Hall 2. Oh, look at those proper arches on that. Ah, oh, that Aventador. No. What is going on there? What is going on there? That is pretty special. I don't think that can move. Ah, oh, that. I don't, I don't like modded cars, but uh, look at that crazy Aventador. What is going on there? <laughs> That's a pretty cool look. And it gets madder at the front. Love it or hate it, Liberty Rock has some wow. polarizing designs. Yeah, bolt-on arches always work, don't they? Now here's a car I really wanted to um, show you, and this is the Range Rover SV Coupe, the two-door version of um, Range Rover, which has been done as a sort of collector edition. Um, I'm really excited about this car, it's how you could push the boundaries, how far could we um, put uh, Range Rover, take it up market. This was the result. Um, a lot of bespoke work on this car, as you'd imagine, just creating the two-door version. It's much harder than you'd imagine it, uh, to do in reality. And with the coupe um, swept back roof, price point is £240,000. And then before you start um, doing the bespoke work to make yours unique, uh, limited production of 999 vehicles. They started doing previews to customers last year and it's gone down a storm. Um, most are spending a, a huge amount of money on personalization. So they're, they're going to be coming out um, later this year, you're going to first see this, but this is the ultimate statement Range Rover. A very classy car. Just want to show you inside and how they've done the, the beautiful wood treatment on the door. Comes down here, there's a little like a bit like Rolls Royce to me how they've used the architecture in the woods over the other side as well and then they've made the seats in the front of one, uh, one colour and then the back is a darker leather colour um, just to give the differentiation between the passenger and the forward passengers and the rear passengers uh, glass roof as well 
right through this car. A very, very special interior. Other big news on the Jaguar stand is, of course, the I-Pace, this all-electric um, Jaguar. I think this um, is a great design. Uh, the more I see it, the more I like it. It's sort of this new modern uh, age of car. The packaging is different because it's uh, been able to do it from electric. So it, although it sits on the sort of same size as a, as a Jaguar XE, it's got a lot more space inside. Um, and it just looks fresh and modern. It's priced from £57,000 in the UK. It has, sort of has a glass roof over it, four seats, four wheel drive. There's an engine in the front and the back. I can't wait to see what the market, how it reacts to this car. I'm going to quickly see if I can jump in there. There we are, I should take a photograph. I'm going to show you the glass roof as well. There we are. Some people are describing it as an SUV. It's always just this new modern age of car. It's hard to classify exactly what it is. It's lower roof line than a regular SUV, but then it has the four wheel drive and strong performance as well um, 90 kilowatt hour battery in it um, talking of a 300 uh, mile range and yeah 4.6 i think to 60 something like that so pretty rapid the car i wanted to show you was there yesterday and that was nico's remade xj which done 1984 xj um, 6 for him i'll throw in some photographs now but it was done by Jaguar Land Rover Classic, uh, commissioned especially for um, Nico McBrain from Iron Maiden Drummer, um, and it was on stand yesterday, and they promised it me it was here today, and it's not, which is such a shame. Final bit I just wanted to show you, here's the architecture to I-Pace, showing it's two electric motors, so you have one up the front um, between the wheels, the sandwich uh, battery in the back, and then another electric motor just sitting on the rear axle there all aluminium construction again and that's what gives it its four-wheel drive and it's great dynamics another fun surprise here is the e-trophy this is jaguar's i-pace race car which is going to be a one make series to support formula e in the coming season great news can't wait to see those bashing door handles in uh, years to come i was almost going to ignore them but here's the mansori stand of the 2018 uh, geneva motor show same sort of crazy stuff that is not to my taste, but is obviously to someone's taste. Um, there you are, a Veyron in a very peculiar finish that is more suited to a, a, a kitchen worktop than a car, in my view. But hey, someone must like it. What have we got this side? And well, they've even done it to a DB11 and, I guess, McLaren 720, complete with Union Jack, tasteful Union Jack little hubcaps. Oh, they've done the inside as well. Oh dear, blue carbon fiber. They don't muck about, do they? They must have some very dedicated customers. We like the ultimate. Oh God, I don't know if I can get any closer. So I'll try, here we go. Yeah, there's more, more crazy finish on this Mercedes. Oh. Couldn't leave the interior alone either. Brown, brown. It's the it's the new white. It's the new way forward. Oh God! They've put a mirror there so I can see the other side. That's unhelpful. Right. Let's go and see something a bit more tasteful. Actually, I quite like those bags. Oh God! I must be going soft in the head. I'm not actually going to go onto the Rolls Royce stand this year. Um, this is the, the new Phantom though, such a statement of car. To ride in is mighty impressive. Um, it just insulates you from the real world at a significant price point. And what they've done on the personalization and interior, I think is wonderful. So really like it, but I'm not going to go on the stand this year because there isn't actually anything new I can show you. So here we are, last year we saw the launch of the McLaren 720S and then early, uh, late last year rather, there was the launch of this, which was the uh, Senna edition of 720S. So this is a, a track special ultimate edition, 500 units of this car. Um, extreme performance, screams performance, 
as you can see you can have optional uh, in the doors you can either have this optional sort of clear panel like that or carbon doors take your pick with a little um, small window opening and then at the rear some some significant area going on and then with these outlets for the exhaust on top of the car there with some serious aero going on here but not as serious as the aero on this car this is what they launched yesterday this is the gtr version of the senna this is there's going to be 75 units of this car horsepower is up again it's lowered it is more extreme it runs on slicks it's conventionally um, sprung um, amazing well, 849 horsepower I think it is uh, a little bit less weight what I can't get over these sort of cars there are no regulations so they can like we saw on the Valorki on the uh, Aston Martin stand no limit so look at that front splitter no way is that going to be ever allowed in racing but on here it's track day special yeah yes sir you can have one of those on your million pound um, Senna GTR uh, and the other surprising factor I have with this car is there's no talk of hybridisation. The P1 had that electric infill motor to infill the torque. That's not here. They've gone for lightness here and they don't want the complication of electric. I'm just hearing some customers are nervous of it. It, gives, it can give um, issues if you don't keep it plugged in, you end up with a dead battery and it's expensive to replace and it'll throw up sort of warnings on screen all the time. So there is a nervousness about putting the electric in there and, and the feedback you get from customers, we just want the really lightweight, the really responsive engine, and we don't need that hybrid push, um, which I think is a very interesting development. Right, I've quickly nipped round the back of the McLaren stand to have a look at this. This is a Senna limited edition. They've done a car with their, um, their special operations division and it's pretty special this thing down to the carbon wheels and then the center is just under 1200 kilos so 1198 uh, kilos a remarkable weight for, for the technology that's on board these seats individual seats six kilos that's saving they regularly about 30 kilos so that's the sort of effort they're going into now on the weight them they like to describe they're in a weight race rather than a power race now Look how extreme this uh, center is. 750,000 including tax. And the customers, as they, he's just confirmed, that they, yeah, they want the super lightweight, they want the uh, really responsive engine, and the hybridization is not something they look for in these cars. It's the lack of weight and the ultimate dynamics. Really like what McLaren are doing here. It's just what you wonder how far it can be pushed. Because um, this the performance potential of this car on track it used to be a time when you used to buy a radical to get the ultimate track day performance this is another extreme and i can see it's interesting how collectible they're coming these are easy cars to maintain they're turnkey they're conventional technology but they are pushing the aero envelope to the extreme so great things happening at mclaren i think next stop should be ferrari and just see what they're up to can't help just going past the uh, Maserati stand. I think it's getting quite sad, Maserati. There's no sparkle. The poor Gran Turismo was there. I mean, I bought one off the show stand in 2007 when it was first launched. It's still here in 2018. It hasn't really developed uh, any further. The Ghibli and the Quattroporte, those designs were disappointing. They haven't really taken off in sales. The Levante. In Europe, they went a bit berserk on the diesel version. They have these great petrol versions. And then we've seen the excitement from Alfa and the Stelvio. I'm worried for Maserati at the moment. It has a, it has a hint of Lancia about it. It's getting a bit forgotten. And it was a great brand. They need to do something a bit sharp it and get that coupe, that very coupe that we saw here uh, a few years ago in concept form it hasn't appeared. Well, here we are on the Ferrari stand where the star of the show is the 488 Pista you see here. Now this is their ultimate version of the 488. We've seen uh, 488 being expecting a Stradale type uh, edition and here it is, the Pista. They've managed to get 90 kilos out of this car which is a remarkable achievement. Power is now up to 720 horsepower, 8,000 RPM. 
and the performance figures are epic. A 200 kilometer is 7.6 uh, seconds away. They've also really worked at the dynamics on it and how the um, the traction controls etc work on this car and I hats off to them really how they're taking the fight to McLaren. There is something very classy I think about this little car and I think it's biggest um, achievement is it can match the LaFerrari times on track and that's from the V8 engine, the 720 V8 engine, their most powerful twin turbo engine ever. You think you go back to Ferrari F40 times and there you're you know, 480 horsepower from a 2.85cc um, um, V8 twin turbo, we're now at 720 horsepower. The other thing I wanted to show you is just these carbon wheels. So this is a 18,000 pound option on the Pista. And what gets me is they're actually coated on the inside. You see the aluminium on the inside. That is a heat protection to protect the carbon fiber. When those brakes can get up to 800 uh, um, degrees C, they needed that protection on the inside to protect the carbon wheels. You, it's probably going to be a must have option on your car. The car lists at £252,000 in the UK, so with those wheels you're at £270,000. And it's also available in red. So there you go, that was my very quick roundup of the Geneva show 2018. Hope you enjoyed it, I've sort of ended on the Ferrari stand, there is so much to see at this event, but I just sense that the 488 Pista, this, they're neck and neck with uh, McLaren on this fight for this supremacy of the ultimate V8 um, super sports car. Um, it's great when you've got competition like that and then you've got the Lamborghini Performante as well mixing in the mix. This car at that price point, when you think of uh, LaFerrari is uh, 1.4, 1.5 million, they went up to around 2.5 million in value, they've dropped back to about 1.5 million. When you can buy, this isn't going to be a limited production car, when you can buy a car that can match it on track for £250,000 from Ferrari, we're very lucky as enthusiasts with the sort of cars there are around at the moment, and long may it continue, and this autonomous future can just disappear into the future just for a moment while I'm here at Geneva. Hope you enjoyed the, um, this video. If you have, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.